In this video, we're working on minor sixes, major sixes, minor sevenths, major sevenths, and octaves. This is LHS Bandrum, and I'm Bob C. Okay, this is the third ear training video we've done. If you haven't listened to the other two, you might go back and do that because those go over some intervals that are a little bit easier to identify at first. These intervals today are a little bit more difficult to identify only because it's harder to find songs that everybody knows that uses these intervals. Remember on the earlier inter other videos, we used Twinkle Twinkle Little Star for a fifth. We used Here Comes a Bride for a fourth, things like that. When you can find a song that uses those intervals, uh, especially if it's a song that means something to you, a song that you know, then it's easier to identify those. With these intervals today, it's difficult to find. There's a lot of show tunes that use these. So if you're into you know Broadway show tunes, then you might find uh, some use of that. But for just straight ahead pop music, it's difficult sometimes to find this stuff. So here we go. The first interval we're going to talk about is the minor six. If we're going from C, then a minor six is the A flat above it. Here we go from D, it's the B flat above it. Uh, the classic song to remember this is the Scott Joplin piece, The Entertainer. It starts off, it doesn't start off with a minor six, it starts off with a half step, but then it quickly goes to the minor six. Minor six. And then obviously we have another octaves too. Here it is starting from G to E flat. There used to be a, there was a real popular movie called uh, Love Story that was popular in the late 70s. It used a descending minor six followed by an ascending minor six. So it went down, then you went back up. Where do I be? But entertainer is probably the better choice. The next interval up is a major six. If we're starting on C, it goes up to A. Uh, you might remember when we talked about scales that A is the relative minor of C. A minor scale is based on the sixth degree of the major scale. So if it sounds like that's, that fits, this is why. The song that we use to remember this is My Bonnie Lies Over the Ocean. My Bonnie Lies Over the Ocean. There's the six. If we go from D, then the six is a B above it. If we go down here from G, then it's an E above it. So let's practice a little bit. What interval do you hear? What song do you hear? What's this? Is that major or minor? Is it a major six or a minor six? Did you hear the entertainer or did you hear my Bonnie lies over the ocean? It's a major six. The other interval or other song, it's really good for this if you're not into my Bonnie Lies Over the Ocean, is the NBC chime theme. NBC, which if you're kind of a music nerd, is a major triad in second inversion. There's a C going to an A, and if you're going to do the triad, it resolves the F. But the interval is there. All right, here's another one. How about this? Is that a major six or a minor six? It's a minor six. You heard the entertainer. You did not hear somewhere. Uh, let's do one more. We'll do it up here. Major or minor? It's a minor six. Here's what a major six would sound like. In fact, if you feel it wanting to resolve, that's kind of a clue that it's a major six.
The next interval we're going to talk about is a minor seventh. Again, starting on C, a minor seventh above that is a B flat. This also uh, comes from West Side Story. I know we used a West Side Story example for tritones, for Maria. Uh, this is another song from West Side Story called Somewhere. There's a place for us. There's your minor seventh interval. There's a place for us. Let's put it in some other keys. If we start on G, then a minor seventh above that becomes F natural. If we go to B flat, then a minor seventh above that is A flat. Finally, we reach the interval of the major seventh. If we're starting on C, then the seventh above that, the major seventh above that is B natural. So it almost sounds like an octave, but not quite. It wants to pull up to the octave, but it doesn't. It's a major seventh. It's the largest interval we have that doesn't go more than one octave. It's the largest simple interval. Beyond this, they get into compound intervals. The best example of this is from that song. I believe it's from the 80s uh, by a band called Aha. If you've seen the video, it's where it's a cartoon, and then the guy becomes life. Uh, so it's... Take on me. That take on is a major seventh that resolves to the octave. So when you hear take on me, take on, then you know that's a major seven. So just to review, today we've gone over the minor six. And we decided that the best interval for that, or the best song, excuse me, we decided the best song for that was The Entertainer. We've done a major six. And I said Bonnie Lies Over the Ocean, but I think NBC might even be more common and easier to remember. So that G to E in this case, if you're uh, playing along, major six, um, minor seventh. There's a place for us somewhere from West Side Story is for your minor seventh. And then for a major seven, take on me. Major seventh is that take on me uh, by the ahas, which is a great video. And if you haven't seen it, then you should go watch this. Finally, we get to the octave, which really should not be that much of a problem. Although, it's one of those things that can sneak up on you, and after you've had a whole big long session of ear training and they'll throw an octave at you, it's like, okay, that can't possibly be that simple. The best song for an octave is Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Somewhere over the rainbow. Somewhere. And it just goes from there. Somewhere over the rainbow. So it's an octave. All right, we're going to run through a few examples of this. You decide which song are you hearing. Are you hearing the entertainer? Are you hearing the NBC login logo? Login, like you log into a TV show. Uh, are you hearing the uh, song Aha for the major seventh? Are you hearing Somewhere from West Side Story for the minor seventh? Or are you hearing the octave? Here we go. So what was that? What song did you hear? You heard, you should have heard, Somewhere Over the Rainbow, which is an octave. I'm going to keep these with the same root, that way you have a comparison. What about this one? What song or what interval do you hear? 
it's a major seventh. Take on me. All right, here's the same root. It's a G, by the way. Now we're going to go up to here. Ah, that was one you weren't expecting. So minor six. What about this one? It's a major six. There are all kinds of places where you can practice uh, your intervals online. You can practice them anytime you hear a song. You should try that. For guitar players, this is a great way to figure out melodies or lead licks, you know, whatever. You can go through it one interval at a time. If I'm playing a G now and I hear this next note, what is that next note? Very practical application of knowing intervals. So, thanks for visiting LHS Banjo. Now go practice.